Yeah, Commissioner Zhang. Um, I have had this past weekend to um, be in community, but also look through a lot of the emails that I've gotten about the sheriff and about the ideal world that they want. The ideal world in which we all come together to solve crime, to solve and end um, gun, gun violence in our communities. And um, I, I will just recap some of those current events because it's super important um, that we lift this up and we talk about the truth. Mm -hmm. So I will say, um, I urge all of us as elected leaders, community leaders, and members to come together to solve the tragic and senseless gun violence hurting our communities, and to have honest and courageous conversations about what it truly takes to make our communities safe. Because I, for one, don't believe in just handing out money without accountability, nor was I elected to just rubber stamp a budget. Mm -hmm. Ramsey County, County has been struck with endless acts of violence perpetuated against our youth, our seniors, our schools, and our places of gathering. And I have to speak out about these events because these are occurring so frequently, and I want us to remind you all and every one of us that this is not normal, nor should it be acceptable. On February 10th, we lost 15-year-old Devin Scott, who was stabbed uh, on his first day of school. He died later that day. And then shortly at his funeral this past Friday, three more minors were shot and wounded in a drive-by. That's unacceptable. On February 11th, the day after Devin Scott's death, the St. Paul Police Department shot and killed Ye Zhang, a 65-year-old Hmong American senior and veteran who was hard of hearing, couldn't speak English, and was alone at the time the police gunned him down. That's not acceptable. On Friday, on, on February 25th, five people were shot outside of King's Crossing, and two of those individuals died. People are outraged. My constituents are outraged. I am outraged. And all these events are not happening in isolation. I entered in this role with the faith that as the first Hmong American, the youngest to serve, and a longtime social justice activist, that I would have the unique vantage point to serve as a beacon for voices that for too long have been underrepresented and silenced. And I will not be invisible to the public discourse about crime and what truly keeps our communities safe. And as I'm learning, I am bringing along my constituents to learn along with me so that we can unpack what we always hear in the narrative about how we are not funding law enforcement. I will say, I look back, the sheriff's budget has increased by more than 38.5% in the last 10 years. The county's attorney budget has consistently been less than the sheriff's. That is available online for you all to look. And again, I am on the, justice, um, the Youth Justice Transformation Committee, and all our numbers show us that our youth are the ones who are black and brown, are consistently the ones who are entering in the, ju uh, the justice system there. And on top of that, I'm on these other boards too, right, on the emergency management services. And what they're telling me in the metro here too, and across the state, is that the majority of our 911 calls are for EMS services. They're not about crime. They're for accessing healthcare. They're using our 911 system as a way to access healthcare because we know that many people don't have access to regular healthcare. So to the residents who have reached out to me, I want you to open your hearts. Are you asking this accountability to the other elected officials who are supposed to represent, uh, represent you? My greatest fear and what I know and have seen is that when we, we want to tokenize people of color and try to put them in racist structures, bad things happen. The other part is if we idolize and don't question the authority of our elected officials, that's when our democracy fails and dies. And so here's what I did out of anger and grief. I gathered with community members to march for justice for Ye Zhang over the, on Sunday. 
I've spoken to our federal policymakers to request for funds to support stable homes and culturally sensitive trauma services. And every day, I work with the most amazing people at the county to craft policies and reforms to provide services that all people in our society needs. That's affordable housing, stable jobs, access to transportation and healthcare. And you will not believe how little these funds get. I'm talking to, I was talking to Link Becker and she was sharing me with me about some of our amazing programs. And we're just putting in a few hundred thousand dollars. That's not even enough. And so with all this happening, I believe that we can make more investments in what's been long neglected and make those investments upstream. So that's what we are doing to address crime. We are trying to prevent crime and not waiting. Because I will tell you that the shooting that happened um, at the funeral, it still happened even though the sheriff was there and that was reported. He did not prevent crime, it happened. And we will continue to see crime happen if we continuously disregard the funding of the other spectrum of safety of what keeps us stable. So I just wanted to take that time to share that and um, to, uh, share that openly with the people who have been contacting me, especially my constitu constituents, because I owe it to you all, the voters, to hold accountable the people who are leading departments as well as um, uh, all of us about where we are prioritizing and putting our money. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner.